tell us more about the solar projects. How did you pick this up on the solar? Who inspired or what triggered you to select this solar project? Uh, yeah, so essentially it all started off when I did research for an organization called Haya on air pollution in India. Through the research, I found out that air pollution in India, the main cause, one of the main causes is the electricity source in India. While digging deeper, I found that this electricity source is actually mainly provided in rural communities for free by the government. However, this electricity source is very harmful to the environment. And obviously, this is what's impacting air pollution the most. So when I was looking into solution, I came across this organization called the Energy Sparage Foundation, um, which was introduced to me by scientific students. So when I looked into the Energy Sparage Foundation, I did a course on solar power and realized that solar power is a great solution for this because not only is it cheaper, but it's also much more environmentally friendly. Um, so yeah, that's why I essentially that's how I got into solar power. And when I started reading in more about it and working with the Energy Sparage Foundation, I realized that um, solar power was such a great solution that I wanted to continue working towards. Bringing so as a part of your project, right, and the solar power, what do you do? How do you take it into the uh, poor folks in the rural villages? What is the What is your approach today? What you are doing and what you are going to do tomorrow? Yeah, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm conducting workshops on solar power. So I have created a course on solar power and contact schools and villages in India. And um, I essentially present this to children, teaching them about the basic components of a solar panel, um, why solar power is important to use, how to use solar power products and everything like that. And then I provide them with a solar um, powered lamp kit. So they're basically able to build their own solar powered lamp, which they can use because while staying with my grandparents also, um, my one set of grandparents live in a village next to Vijayavada. So um, like an hour away from Vijayavada. And every time I go there, I see that a lot of children struggle with basic things like studying at night due to the lack of electricity. So essentially what I do is I provide them with these lamps to be able to study at night. And in the future, I'm currently working on raising funds to be able to install complete solar powered systems into public um, places where students can access to study at night, such as schools, for example, which are in need of continuous electricity. Oh, wow, what a thought. I'm, I'm very impressed and hats off to you and Vita for thinking such a big, uh, wider goal for yourself on the solar panels. So did you ever, um, okay, let me ask another question on solar power. How much that kit costs you? How much does the kit cost me? So essentially we receive from the Energy Swaraj Foundation. So um, it would generally cost around 500 rupees through the website, but um, we're able to receive it for less because of our association with the organization. Excellent. So the reason I asked you the cost because all the viewers who are watching, how can we help Anvita? That's the goal of this entire show. You know, either we have to be inspired or help to people who are really doing a great job. So that's the reason I'm asked all the viewers, please, if you can help in any scale to Anvita, please reach out to us and uh, we will be definitely um, giving those funds to Anvita to, en to enable her and, uh, you know, achieve her goal in a bigger, large scale. Right, Anvita? And yes. uh, so coming to the, for example, what, what, what? What is your goal? Basically in your life, what is your goal to be achieved? Okay, so I think that overall my goal is I want to continue impacting as many people as I can in my life because I feel like the true meaning of life is to be able to be as impactful as possible. And I think in doing so right now, I'm doing service and I think definitely service will always be a part of my life. But what I've realized through the service is that policy making is a huge um, thing that's really important because at a basic level, policy making is what can make the most impact to countries, to states of people, right? So I essentially want to always continue my nonprofit organization, but also go into law to be able to make policies that help people at a large scale as well. Absolutely. That was my next question. What is your education goals? You know, 
because yes. you are into social uh, activities and definitely there will be a point where you know you have to focus on your career goal that mm -hmm. that's fantastic you answered that my question because you are going in the, your education which can impact to people that's a great thought and uh, so be, before this social activities was your goal to become a lawyer or it was be, see whenever you are a child you ask what is your goal they say engineer doctor right so yeah. when you were small what was the goal for you or your parents yeah so i definitely always wanted to become a lawyer so even when i was like up since i was in fourth grade i used to participate actively in debate like for example when i was tw 12 i won the under 16 national category for debate um in america so i think debate slowly I got into debate and realized okay lawyers debate a lot so I was really passionate about law at that point and still am very much so I think that since I was a kid law was always a part of what I wanted to do when I grew up. And with the talking about your care good foundation so definitely you have a vision you have a goal but how do you ensure that you add more working power to your organization? So what I mean to say is, do you have more people joining your organization and helping you? And what is your uh, approach to bring people onto this platform? Uh, yeah, so generally I use social media with thankfully through the articles that we've had, the recognition that has come to CareGood, we've been able to receive a lot of, um, like we've been able to raise awareness through social media um and like for example through linkedin right to get people on the platform but also um it's not only us reaching out i think it's become um we've become a little sustainable in a way so there's people reaching out to us asking whether they can volunteer whether they can participate in social activities and that makes me particularly happy because there's people actually taking initiative to it's not because of college it's not because they want to do it because their parents told them but these teens want to be able to participate in social activities themselves after learning what care good has done and what i as a teen have done with care good so i think that that's really inspiring to me as well Excellent, Anita. I think social media is the biggest platform where you have access to today. And I think yeah. I, would, uh, I would tell you to utilize because that's where I saw your work and I wanted to bring it to the community. This might be definitely uh, helpful to you from all the viewers. We never know. And uh, always getting funds and helping in the right way is always needed. So we all are there to help you and keep your vision alive and motivated, uh, Anvita. So how many people you have today as a part of volunteering? Uh, volunteering, so it's always changing. Um, I would say, for example, in the summer, we can have um, like 30 people or so like uh, from different schools across Hyderabad ready to volunteer. Um, however, for example, through the school year, it would be different months, different people based on whether they have exams or not exams. Uh, so I think it overall varies, yeah. So what... Coming apart from these social activities, let's talk about your life. So how do you balance your life between the social activities, education, family? Tell us the viewers and all the teens who are watching or who will be watching in future, how do you manage your time? Okay, so I think that the main thing that I do is I set, cal I have a calendar. So I set particular timings to do particular things. For example, generally Sundays and sat Saturdays or Sundays, mainly Sundays are my days for social work in person. So what I do is then I would actually go to villages, go to old age homes, orphanages, wherever I am going and conduct these social activities. Throughout the week, I spend one to two hours per day actually working on progressing with Care Good and planning for these social activities or creating new courses um or once again every time we go to old age homes we collect stories so writing those stories putting out those stories that's what i do throughout the whole week and um that's one to two hours the rest once i'm back from school i obviously also dedicate a couple hours for homework which is important and studies and then the rest of the time um along with saturdays i spend with family primarily and friends Excellent. So overall, you are very happy with uh, with your life, balancing your time between them. That's a great thing. I think uh, being a teenager, I think I am learning something from you that is maintaining a calendar is very, very, very tough these days, right? Yeah. 
So how do you manage? Do you have any tools or how is that today? How do you do it? Yeah, so I think I've tried so many things uh, from reminders to the notes on my computer, Google Calendar. But what I found most effective was just writing it down because when I write it down, I see it right there every time it's on my desk. So I have this little um, journal. I just write down what I'm doing in the day, the different timings. And I use something called the Pomodoro technique. So whenever I'm doing something, I set a timer for 20 minutes and then take a five minute break, go back to it 20 minutes. So I'm very aware of how much time I'm spending on each thing that I'm doing. Excellent. Excellent. Anvita, I also saw some of the young researchers for social impact program. What is that all about? Do you, do you mind sharing that with all our viewers so that, you know, the teenagers know about this research program? Yeah. So essentially I was part of that research program a little while back, I believe, uh, towards the end of 2019. Um, and this was a research program with WILAC. So I found out about WILAC through my school since we had an Oxfam WILAC club. And after that, I essentially signed up for this program. This program um, helps you collaborate with nonprofit organizations. For example, here I collaborated with Haya for, uh, for research on air pollution. And we're in a group of around five students, um, five people, um, and we all collaborate on conducting research with mentors on a particular topic that we're interested in. Yeah. Great. Great. So anyone can do this program and what will be the benefit of it? Yeah. So anyone can sign up for this program at any time. Um, I'm not too sure about the acceptance rates, but they're really welcoming for teens who are talented and ready to be able to make a change in this world. And um, sorry, could you repeat the second question? Like what is the benefit of doing this? So I think that um, out of doing all of this, not only did I learn, obviously, about air pollution and about um, how to write a research paper, the structure of it, I also was able to meet a lot of teens who are interested in research or interested in the same topics that I am, that are making a change right now, that are that have nonprofit organizations, that have projects making an impact, whether it's impacting tens of pe 10 people or a thousand people. And meeting all of these bright minds really helped me, inspired me to continue moving forward. And it was great meeting everyone yeah excellent Anita, i wanted to ask two questions to you doing all these social things and also in your career you know family time and all this what is that something makes you very happy oh my god i feel happy doing this and one instance i wanted to say oh my god too much work i have to leave this so tell us two instances what you feel about this good and bad about it Okay, so the moments that I feel most happy to do this is when I actually speak to the senior citizens um, at the old age homes, because a lot of the times when I'm speaking to them, they say things like, oh, you're like my granddaughter, you must be the age of my granddaughter. And a lot of them, they don't have interaction with teens, right? And so the fact that I'm speaking to them, they think that it's so special to them. And that's so special to me, because I... First of all, they are so wise and they have so many lessons to pass down, especially with all that they've been um, that has happened throughout their life. They have so many lessons that it's so important. I always go out feeling so much better, so much more wise because of everything that they've passed on to me. So that's probably every time I speak to the senior citizens, that's when I feel the most motivated. Um, and then one time that I wanted to quit. Um, I have to think about this actually. Um, I would say at times, for example, when we may be like creating courses or things like that, um, that can be very tedious tasks, like sitting there, writing down everything in detail, getting it double checked, triple checked, um, creating elaborate presentations. So that's when I get a little bit bored of it. But then once again, I'm back to the service work and actually presenting what I've made, right? And that's when I know that everything that I've done, even if I felt like quitting was worth it. Absolutely. I think uh, that's that's really, you answered it very correctly that that's the exact feelings everyone will have when you when you overwhelmed with work and then sometimes, you know, uh, that's absolute. But again, the motivation comes when you go to people and hear from them all good things about you and, you know, everyone praises about your work and that feeds more 
positiveness rather than negativeness. Yes, that's yeah. that's true. So let us. What is what is your next project, um, Anvita? And uh, what is the next project, and where you want to scale this organization? Um, okay, so essentially, my next project um, is uh, what I've been speaking about. It's the sharing of senior citizen stories. So we've already been doing this at a small scale, for example, through social medias like Instagram, Facebook, and through our blog on the CareGood website. However, we want to create a whole platform of teens who are interested in hearing and learning from stories, um, the senior citizen stories, right? And essentially, my next project is essentially creating this platform and and getting a large scale of really inspiring stories from senior citizens and um, like sharing it with teens. So that's essentially my next project. And in regards to how I want to scale this organization as a whole, um, I want to be able to impact millions overall, not only in India, but worldwide. So my next step so far, I've been working on impacting, um, for example, um, senior citizens or rural children across India, but I want to be able to, for example, collect more stories of senior citizens worldwide. And I've been doing this through starting chapters across the world. So for example, there's um, one in Florida, Texas, um, there's one in Rajasthan, in York, in the UK. So I'm still continuing um, growing the chapter program so that I can create make this an international organization overall and if there's any other teams um that are interested in you know actively being leaders in their geographical location through CareGrid then they can start their own chapter and collect stories of senior citizens themselves for the platform great Anvita I think uh, we wish you all the best in all your endeavors and uh... I will be more than happy to help you in any ways where I can, in my limits, for sure. And finally, in the interest of time, it was wonderful talking to you. And I wanted to let your message to the viewers, especially the teens. What is your message to them? Um, okay, so my message for teens is don't hold back. Always make sure to if you feel like making an impact then just do it there's so many things like how do I do this I'm too young how do I start just start when you start everything will set itself in place and making an impact is not as hard as it seems absolutely I think what a fantastic uh, way of approach you have told I think you are right you need you, need, you should not hold back because once you put a step forward people will take you to the next level right so you meet a lot of different people and, you know, they will give some suggestions. They will put forward help towards you. And, you know, hand in hand, we grow a lot from every day is a learning day for me. Right. So Amita, with that said, I think thank you so much for uh, spending 30 minutes. You know, this I wanted to let all the viewers, you know, to see more about Anvita. And uh, her name is Anvita Kolipara. And you can also Google for, uh, you know, care good foundation on the web and uh, please support her in the upcoming projects and please reach out to me if anyone have any interest or any of your any of your kids wants to be part of uh, uh, care good foundation and help them from united states we are more than happy again thank you so much uh, anvita thank you so much for your parents for encouraging and grandparents too and uh, you will continuously grow god bless you thank you so much have a wonderful night Thank you so much. You too.